In order to introduce how you factor a polynomial by grouping, I'll assume you're familiar with my first two videos on factoring. And I will go over these two examples before I add to the rules for factoring. I started these rules in the previous video and stated that you should first check to see if there is a greatest common factor. In this case, there is no GCF other than 1. So then you pay attention to the total number of terms. Do you have two terms? In this case, no. Do you have three terms? In this case, yes. I've already covered what to do when the leading coefficient is 1. You can give yourself two sets of parentheses and put x and x because you know that that would give you x squared were you to multiply. But in this case, when leading coefficient is other than 1, if I give myself two sets of parentheses, I don't know if this first position is to be a 6x and a 1x or a 2x and a 3x. Since it's a little more complicated, we have to go through a bit more work in order to factor this polynomial. So when you use factor by grouping, you multiply first times last. and list all the factor pairs. Then noting the sign of the last term, since it's positive, you're looking for a sum of positive 11. Looking through our factor pairs, you had positive 3 and positive 8, you could get positive 11. So we keep the first term, we keep the last term, and we rewrite this middle term as positive 3x and positive 8x. And now the grouping part is you group together the first two and factor out the GCF. In this case, 3x. Usually when you factor something out, you put it in front of parentheses. Dividing out the 3x, you'll be left with 2x and dividing out the 3x, you'll be left with plus 1. Now grouping together the next two terms, we have a GCF of 4. Usually when you factor something out, you put it in front of parentheses. Dividing out the 4 leaves us with 2x. Dividing out the 4 leaves us with plus 1. Notice that what we have in parentheses is identical. This must be the case if you're using factor by grouping because now we're going to factor out 2x plus 1 from each of these. So usually when you factor something out, You put it in front of parentheses. So when we divide out the 2x plus 1, the only thing left standing is 3x. So we put 3x. And again, when we divide out 2x plus 1, the only thing left standing is a positive 4. Here's the factored form of our original polynomial. You could check this by multiplying, and you will get right back where you started. Looking at number 2, we have no GCF other than 1. We have three terms with leading coefficient other than 1, so we'll use factor by grouping. Multiply first times last, 
and list the factor pairs. Noting that the last term is positive, that means we're looking for a sum of positive 14. And the only factor pair that can give us a sum of positive 14 would be positive 4 and positive 10. So we keep the first term. We keep the last term and we rewrite the middle term as positive 4x and positive 10x. Now for the grouping, you group together the first two, factor out the GCF, in this case x. If you factor something out, usually you put it in front of parentheses. Factoring out x would leave us with 5x, and factoring out x will leave us with plus 4. Grouping together the next two terms, the GCF is 2, so we'll put that in front of our parentheses. Dividing by 2 leaves us with 5x. Dividing by 2 leaves us with plus 4. Notice what's in parentheses again is identical. So that's what we're going to factor out. If we're going to factor it out, we'll put it in front of parentheses. Here and here. So working over here, divide out 5x plus 4, you're left with x. And dividing out 5x plus 4, you're left with plus 2. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial. And now I'll add to the rules for factoring. Remember, number one is to check for a GCF. If it's other than one, factor it out. Then number two is, do you have a total of two terms? I'll cover this soon. Then number three is, do you have a total of three terms? If so, is the leading coefficient of one? If it is, you can factor directly. But if you have a leading coefficient other than one, you can use factor by grouping. I say you can use factor by grouping because there are other methods. So looking at number three, number one on the list is do we have a GCF? Yes, we can factor a three out of each term. If we factor it out, usually we write it in front of parentheses. In this case, I'll use brackets. So for the first term, we'll end up with 4x squared. For this term, positive 8x. And for this term, 21. It'll be negative. Then you continue down the list. Do you have two terms? No. Do you have three terms? Yes. Is the leading coefficient other than one? Yes. We'll use factor by grouping. Multiply first times last. And list all the factors. Three goes in twice, 
28 times. 4 goes in. Cut that in half. 5 won't work. 6 goes in. Cut that in half. 7. Actually, you have to check 7 and it does go in. Goes in 12 times. For 8, you can't cut that in half. 8 won't work. 9 doesn't go in. 10 won't work. 11 won't work. And you already have 12. So here's all the factor pairs. Noting that the last term is negative, we're looking for a difference of positive 8. So which factor pair will get us there? If we had a positive 14 with a negative 6, we would get our positive 8. Now I'm going to keep up with this 3 outside the bracket and basically I'll drop it down in front of the answer. But for the next two steps it's a little confusing if I keep writing it. So I'm just going to focus on what's inside the brackets. For factor by grouping we keep the first term, keep the last term, and rewrite our middle term as negative 6x positive 14x. And now for the grouping, you group together the first two, look for a GCF. We could factor 2x out of each of these. We'll put that in front of parentheses. And this would leave us with 2x. And here when we factor it out, we're left with negative 3. Grouping together the next two terms, we can factor out, hmm, a 7 from each term. So this would give us 2x, and this would give us negative 3. Again, what we have in parentheses is identical, so that's what we'll factor out. Since we're going to factor it out, we'll put it in front of a set of parentheses. When we factor it out of here, we're left with 2x. And when we factor it out of here, we're left with positive 7. But this isn't the complete factored form. I have to remember to bring the 3 down. And put it in front of these parentheses. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial. So looking at number 4, we have no GCF other than 1, 3 terms with leading coefficient other than 1, so we'll use factor by grouping. Multiply first times last. This gives us 54, and now we'll list all the factor pairs. Four won't work, can't cut that in half. Five won't work. Six works, because I can cut that in half. Seven won't work. Eight won't work, and I already have nine. Here are all the factor pairs. Noting that the last term is negative, so we want a difference of negative 25. So looking at our factor pairs, if we had negative 27, positive 2, 
that would give us a negative 25. We keep the first term, keep the last term, and rewrite our middle term as positive 2x, negative 27x. Now for the grouping, we group together the first two, factor out the GCF, in this case x, here it would leave us with 3x, and here we would get plus 2. Grouping together the next two terms, looking for the GCF, I could factor a 9 out of each term, but notice these are both negative, and in parentheses I want my terms to both be positive. So I'll have to factor out a negative 9 from each term, which means I put negative 9 in front of the parentheses. Negative divided by negative, I'll have a positive inside the parentheses, and then 27 divided by 9, 3, the x comes down. Here negative divided by negative will be positive, 18 divided by 9. Now we have the same thing in parentheses, and that's what we'll factor out. So when we factor it out of here, we're left with x. And when we factor it out of here, we're left with negative 9. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial. Looking at number 5, there's no GCF other than 1. We have three terms with leading coefficient other than 1, so we'll use factor by grouping. Multiply first times last. There are all the factor pairs. Noting the last term's positive, we want a sum of negative 8. So if we had negative 3 and negative 5, we could get a negative 8. Keeping the first term, keeping the last term, we'll rewrite the middle term as negative 3n and negative 5n. Grouping together the first two, we can factor out an n. This would leave us with, and here we would get, grouping together the last two, there really isn't a GCF other than one. But if we factor out a positive 1 from each term, these signs will not match these signs. So what we'll have to do is factor out a negative 1 from each term. So negative 5n divided by negative 1 gives us a positive 5n. And here, positive 3 divided by negative 1 gives us negative 3. Now what we have in parentheses is identical. So we will factor 5n minus 3 from here and here. Factoring out of here, we're left with n. And factoring out of here, we're left with negative 1. So here's the factored form 
of our original polynomial. Looking at number 6, we do have a GCF. We could factor a 5 and an x out of each term. The leading coefficient is negative, and just as I mentioned in a previous video, whenever your leading term is negative, you want to factor out a negative from each term because it's more complicated to write this in factored form when your leading term is negative. So we're going to factor out a negative 5x from each term. Here we'll be left with 3x squared. Here we'll have a negative 13x, and here we'll get a positive 12. After you factor out your GCF, you observe how many terms. We have three leading coefficient other than one, so we'll use factor by grouping. Multiply first times last, and list the factors. Cut that in half. Five won't work. Six works. Noting that the last term's positive, we want a sum of negative 13. So looking at our factor pairs, if we had negative 4 and negative 9, we could get our negative 13. I'm going to keep up with this negative 5x, but if I write it on each line, it's kind of confusing to see, so I'm just going to drop it down in front of the answer. So I'll just do factor by grouping with what's in the brackets. Keep the first term. Keep the last term. And rewrite the middle term as negative 4x, negative 9x. Grouping together the first two, we can factor out an x. This would leave us with n here. Grouping together the last two, we can factor out a 3, but again, we don't want a negative 3 and a positive 4. We want positive 3 and negative 4. So we're going to factor out a negative 3 from each of these. Negative divided by negative, so this will be a positive 3x and positive divided by negative, negative 4. Now what we have in parentheses matches, that's what we're going to factor out. So we'll have 3x minus 4. And when we factor it out of here, we're left with x. And when we factor it out of here, we're left with negative 3. And don't forget to bring down the negative 5x. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial. So looking at number 7 and following our rules for factoring, do we have a GCF? I mean, not other than one. Two terms? No. Three terms? No. We have four terms. So we'll have to add to our list 
and it turns out that when you have four terms, you should use factor by grouping. And why is that? Well, notice when we started with three terms, if we're going to use factor by grouping, all we did was rewrite it as four terms. And then we grouped together the first two, grouped together the last two. So it turns out that if you're given four terms, they've pretty much already done this first step for you. And you simply proceed from here with factor by grouping. That is, you group together the first two. We can factor out a k. And this would leave us with and here. Group together the last two. We could factor out a 7, but again, we want to end up with a positive and a positive. Here we have negative and negative. So we're going to factor out a negative 7 from each term. So here we'll have a positive 3k, and here a positive 2. Now what we have in parentheses is identical, so we'll factor out 3k plus 2. When we factor it out of here, we're left with k. And when we factor it out of here, negative 7. Looking at number 8, there is no GCF other than 1. We have four terms, so we'll use factor by grouping. Group together the first two, we can factor out an x. And this would leave us with here, negative x divided by x leaves us with a negative 1. Grouping together the last two, we could factor out a 5, but again, you got to be careful with your signs. We have to factor out a negative 5. I don't know if you're noticing the pattern, but whenever this middle sign is negative, you end up factoring out a negative. So this leaves us with a positive 6x, and here we get negative 1. Now what we have in parentheses is identical, so that's what we're going to factor out. When we factor it out of here, we're left with x, and when we factor it out of here, we're left with negative 5. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial. Looking at number 9, there's no GCF other than 1, and we have 4 terms, so we'll use factor by grouping. We'll group together the first two, and we can factor out a 2k from each one. This would leave us with 5j. And here we would be left with negative 3. Grouping together the next two, uh, we already have positive 5j, negative 3 in parentheses. So all we're going to do is factor out a positive 1 from each term. It might seem strange, but we need two sets of parentheses here. 
So again, we're factoring out a positive one. We put that in front of the parentheses. And here when we factor out a positive one, we're left with 5j. Here when we factor out a positive one, we're left with negative 3. And now we have the same thing in parentheses, so we will factor that out. When we factor it out of here, we're left with 2k. And when we factor it out of here, we're left with plus 1. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial.